Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all safe and well. My name is Lewis. Thank you for stopping by. Now on today's episode, I think I've got three gems for you today. Certainly worthy of your consideration. Um, I'm going to go through each album in turn, share some of my thoughts about why I happened to purchase these albums and give you my opinion on what the highlight tracks are. So first out of the gate today is a 1973 release. It's by a band called Man Drill. And the album's entitled Just Outside of Town. There we go. I like that cover. That's super interesting. So um, overall with this album, um, I've got to be like brutally honest here. Um, I didn't really like the album. Shh. Um, but yes, uh, there are some standout pieces on there and I will talk about them a bit later on. But um, overall, yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of this particular work. Um, too much of it was on the meh side, for me anyway. Um, there's funky stuff and there's more kind of, um, I would say, more mature composition, compositions on this album. And I certainly favoured them the more mature pieces rather than the funkier stuff. I just didn't think the, the, the funk hit the mark. Yeah, that's quite a cruel thing to say, but yeah, that's how I felt about it. So, um, however, where the album did uh, get some of its compositions right, it really got them right. They, they were really outstanding. So, um, first of all, um, let's address the elephant in the room, the cover. It's magnificent. Um, high testosterone from a bygone era. Um, a time when dudes will go topless at a drop of a hat. And as you can see, these, these gentlemen work backwards in coming forward. Um, yeah, this dude here. Yeah. It, look, you know, I can only dream of having a physique like that. And no wonder he's got it on display. Can't blame him. Uh, this dude here, um, he... Yeah, this one here. He really does make me laugh. Um, I like the bath robe in the kind of zebra print. I like that the the belt for the robe. <laughs> um, instead of being around, his, his waist on the outside is on the inside. Um, yeah, hands on hips. Yeah, receding afro. Yeah, receding hairline afro. Yeah, got to give it out to him. He, he, he certainly doesn't lack confidence. But... If I was to be in this band, um, I think I would have dressed like this gentleman here. I like the top hat. I love the floral shirt. I like the patchwork jeans. Yeah, he's rocking a good look there. He's looking, yeah, he's just saying, yeah, I'm different. Uh, Navajo man here, he's, oh, he does make me laugh. Uh, a two-piece white suit. Um, yeah, I like the headband. Yeah, it's got it going on. So yeah, that's that's brought me like, yeah, several minutes of amusement, this particular cover. So, um, yeah, back to the album itself. So, um, yeah, as I said, the album in and of itself um, leans to more the, the more funkier side of things. Um, but I didn't buy it for that particular reason. Um, there are two intro, sorry, instrumental tracks to be found on this album, which I find absolutely extraordinary. Um, and I will tell you the, the titles of those tracks in just a moment. Um, yeah, I feel those tracks are so strong, um, yet they feel out of place on this album. They feel more appropriately suited to something like a film score rather than on this particular album. But that shows you the breadth of talent on display here. So if you're not like, well, yeah, if you're kind of not like me and you like your funk, you might find... A couple of pieces on here which might suit your taste but yeah it didn't resonate with me so there you go um the compositions that i did like um they were done with uh, a distinctive style which um didn't have any kind of sugar coating on it it wasn't trying to do you any favors um there was no sentimentality it was more a kind yeah these two pieces were more gritty i would say um with more pathos um but when you get to hear them uh tell me what you think in the comment section the tracks um i am alluding to are aspirational 
or aspiration flame and africus retrospectus yes those are the two tracks that i would take away from this particular album so as i said overall the album's not for me but for those two tracks um yeah it made it worthwhile as far as i was concerned the notables on this album are claude coffee cave who's on piano, does a lovely job, and Carlos Wilson on trombone, flute, and sax. Again, magnificent contribution. So um, have a listen to those tracks, see what you think. Um, still relatively affordable, this particular album. So if you're like me and you just like the two tracks that I've mentioned, you should be able to pick this up for reasonable money. So that's the first one. The second one today is a lovely slice of uh, Latin jazz. It's a 2007 release by a gentleman called Arthur Vero Kai, and the album's entitled Encore. Um, yeah, it's they could have done so much more with the cover. Um, there's lots of good ideas here, but the actual. I'm not sure why Mr. Verakai is wearing clothes. Um, obviously, quite a few sizes too big for him. There may be reasons. Hopefully, they're not kind of disturbing ones. But, um, yeah, it's a very odd image. So, But it, I like the, the yellow. I like that kind of, like, the, the tone that they've gone for. I, I do like that. I like the gateway. I, I, I do like that. Um, it, it just doesn't quite work. But anyway, that's just my opinion. So, put simply, um, oh, hopefully I did say it was a 2007 release. But um, put simply, this is a lovely album um, with more than one nod to uh, towards Sergio Mendes. So, as far as I know, Mr. Verakai has only done two studio albums and this is the most recent one. I do have the earlier one. Um, I can't see at this moment i might try to find it if i can um yeah uh i like his work i like his output particularly his first album i thought it was absolutely astonishing and it took me in a direction in terms of tasting brazilian music which i wouldn't have encountered or had a had a growing interest in unless i would have made that pit stop which i did with his first album which is absolutely sensational um this particular album i find i found it so good that it sent me off in a tangent as to who's better who's got the greater talent out of sergio mendez and mr verakai now in order to yeah you might say well why did you do that for <laughs> it's quite obvious that sergio mendez is is a bigger and better talent um i'm not entirely sure i think it's a lot closer than that and there are a couple of reasons for that. Now, um, yes, to give you some context, it's um, Mr. Verakai can a lot of this, a lot of this album and the parts that I do like have that Sergio Mendes tinge to it, and he obviously can replicate it with ease. But also knowing his um, his first album the way I do and liking it the way that I, I do. Um, I know that he also has his own distinct flavour as well, and it's something not to be sniffed at. It is high-level Latin jazz. There's no doubts about it. It's just, yeah, there's some superb performances. Um, so, uh, when you are considering this one, um, think of it as kind of like a homage piece rather than seeing Mr. Verakai at his at his best and that's when he's doing his own thing i think here i'm not saying it's a cash grab but i i think in terms of his talent he can replicate other people with ease if he wants to and he can pretty much give you the same standard that the original artist probably could have put out so that kind of indicates some of his talent but like i said his own work with his own direction i think is extremely powerful material so check it out if you can um so yeah uh yeah high production values uh compositions are really well done on this particular one um do invoke the they do invoke the kind of whole ipanema beach kind of sound it, it's, it's just lovely it's happy it's 
you know, everything that you want in your kind of Brazilian, well, what I want in my Brazilian music, and that's um, an overall sense of fun, and you definitely get it on this one. Um, the tracks that I will uh, highlight from this album, and again, I'm going to butcher the Portuguese here, so do forgive me, Amor na Contra Mal, uh, Tupa Tupi, and Dona Das Menias. Yeah, those are the three tracks. Um, do have a listen to them. They're really good tracks. Um, they should put you in a happy mood if you're in a, a well, if you're currently not in the best of moods. Have a listen to those three tracks and let me know whether or not it actually changed your mood. So the notables on this album are Clarice uh, Grover and um, Marcio Lott on vocals, who do absolutely superb job on the vocal duties on this particular album. Yeah, astonishing. Really loved it. Um, Altair Martins on trumpet and Robertino Silva on percussion. Again, um, all four people's contributions on this album. Um, yeah. I don't want to minimise it or anything. I think they should be given full props because they really did add to the obvious... Well, there's an abundance of talent on display. So have a listen to the album. See what you can th you think. You can still get this album. It's still knocking about in the wild. You should be able to get it for reasonable money. Um, if you do... S well, have a listen first, as always. But um, if you like what you hear, um, I'd say make a beeline for... Um, yeah, it's just nice to have in the collection. Super nice. So that's the second album. The third album today is, yeah, it just puts a smile on my face. Um, yeah, I just love it. I really do. Um, it's a 1976 release by a gentleman, well, by an artiste by the name of Little Beaver. And the album's entitled, When Was the Last Time? So there you go. I like that album cover. It, it cracks me up. Um, so Little Beaver, otherwise known as Willie Beaver Hales, or also as well known as William Hale. So um, first of all, the cover art, um, cover photo. I really do like it. Um, you can see that um, Mr. Hale was really enthusiastic to get his uh, sh shirt off. Um and he probably thought he looked, you know, it was going to be a good look, just like the Mandrill cover earlier on. Um, but I think the artistic director had other ideas, hence the coat on the back of the, the chair and the, the coat hanging off the back of it. It's like, OK, if you insist on taking your top off, but um, we're just going to have to cover up your, your stomach. You're not looking the best. <laughs> but anyway, um, bless them from doing it. Um, I love this album. Um, I had a great time with it. Um, it's a lovely slice of classic R and B. Um, yeah, it's from and the reason why I enjoyed it so much. It, it's got all the ingredients that I look for in a classic seventies R and B album. Um, the deep, intoxicating bass lines, um, the a prominent string and horn section. And to finish it off, a howling male vocalist. So there's a lot of screaming and hoo hoo kind of thing going on. Um, and he does it really good. Uh, it's super entertaining when he does it. Um, so yeah, check that out. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to yeah, underplay how good this is. I found this album to be bad ass. Now, I've got, you know, a London accent and I really shouldn't be doing the kind of North American thing. But that's the only, yeah, that's the only way I can really express how I feel about this particular album. Um, but reasonably, you might say, well, Lewis, it's like you're, you're, you're it, you know, you're so enthusiastic about this album. I've never heard of this little beaver before. Can he really be that good? Now, um, I'm going to answer strongly in the affirmative yes he really is that good um but maybe the reason why you've never heard of him is you've got to think of who he was up against in terms of who were the names when he was doing his thing who else was around doing their thing 
and the list is not exclusive to this these artists but just, this is just to give you a general flavor so he's up against willie hutch uh isaac hayes barry white curtis mayfield leroy hudson um all of whom operate in the same kind of wheelhouse as L little beaver um so it's no surprise and i haven't you know i've mentioned stevie wonder you know marvin gay michael jackson or what they were doing at the similar time so that you know so it was extremely competitive extremely competitive so that may be the reason why you've never heard of him but now that you have please check out his material he's got some classics out there now the tracks that i would recommend from this album would be uh pretty little girl concrete jungle and we three all of those are superb tracks and the notables on this album uh would be george chocolate perry on bass uh, Robert Ferguson on drums and Timmy Thomas on keyboards so yeah do yourselves a favor have a listen to it um, in terms of definitely in London um, this is one of those kind of sporadic albums which you do see pop up every now and again um, for reasonable money so when you have listened to the highlighted tracks if you think it's one for you uh, be patient, you will be able to get your hands on it for reasonable money, and I would say hold out for a reasonably priced one. Um, you're in for an enjoyable time. Um, so, yeah, I'm super pumped to have heard this album again. So, yeah, it was an absolute pleasure doing this particular video. So, um, that's the last album for today. Um, if you found the episode... Uh, reasonably informative and even slightly uh, entertaining uh, please consider liking subscribing and sharing so um until the next episode please look after yourselves and i will see you as they say in the north of england see you in a bit all right take care bye bye